Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, being here. Um, I'll be sharing about Beware and Toga uh, project, which is one of the projects under uh, one of the project under Beware um, Suite. Uh, I'm Paul. Uh, I'm a developer, and uh, at work I use .NET and Microsoft stuff, and outside I use Python, R, and uh, the rest of the languages for having stuff. So that is my GitHub. Uh, you can check out my uh, work in GitHub, and then that's also my Twitter. So. Why do we have uh, uh, this, right? So recently, early this month, there was uh, PyCon Australia. Uh, it was held in uh, Melbourne. So usually, uh, PyCon have this, uh, uh, after the main uh, conference, they usually allot uh, two days for sprint. So uh, sprint one and sprint two. And I joined um, two projects. One is MicroPython, and then the other one is uh, Beware. So this sprint is uh, an avenue for uh, enthusiasts, uh, developers like you, and um, anyone who came to the conference to be able to contribute to open source. Yeah. So one of the open source projects that uh, I work on is uh, Beware. So what we're going to tackle today, or in this session, are um, we'll delve into three things. Uh, we'll look into uh, what Beware is, so that at least you'll get to know what Toga is later, because it's one of the pro projects inside the Beware suite. And then after that, uh, I'll show you um, what happened in the sprint. Let's say if you want to extend Beware or extend Toga project later, how should you go about it? And then we'll just wrap up uh, after that. Yep. So yeah, so this is based on sharing. I didn't deep, uh, dig deep much into the framework, but I'll share what I have experienced so far during the sprint. So what is Beware? Beware is a collection of projects that can help develop, debug, and launch Python software. So it's a um, collection of various things. Uh, you, it can it include tools that enable Python to run on different devices, like Windows, Apple, Mac, uh, Android phone, iOS. And it also include packaging um, uh, libraries so that you can uh, develop your Python application and then have a way to deploy it in the various platforms. And then libraries that accesses native widgets, native widgets in uh, Windows using .NET Framework, native widget in, uh, in uh, Android using Java, and also uh, I think in Mac OS, I think they use something called Cocoa. Yep. And tools to develop, debug, analyze, and deploy. So it's, it contains uh, a number of other things like um, converting from um, Python to Java, converting from Python to JavaScript, and so on and so forth. So these are the, uh, they categorize this collection of projects into six categories. Uh, one is like applications, uh, which is um, if it's a standalone project under the Beware suite. So the, the icon that you can see here is Podium. It's an uh, uh, open source project under Beware that is used to do presentations. Uh, the one you can, that you can see on the tools, actually under the tools, if you click that in the website, uh, there are like uh, an, uh, several of them, but the one that I can highlight is at least this one. This one, they call it uh, B, uh, B4, B4 as in BEE4, because after you um, uh, build um, or after the, the, the deployment, you want to have checks like, uh, is my code uh, uh, meeting the coding standards? So that's why B, B4, <laughs> so it's B4. Um, and then you see the other uh, icon, which is, uh, it looks like a suitcase or briefcase. Uh, briefcase is, uh, our uh, packaging uh, library. So that uh, the idea is uh, you package your application, you go to the Windows building, to the Linux building, to the Android building, and then have it uh, deployed there. So um, that's briefcase. And then the library, which is the one that we uh, will be um, digging into further later, uh, that's the Yak. Uh, that's the mascot for Toga. Uh, why do they call it toga? Uh, because in Rome, where they wear toga. <laughs> uh, that is uh, the library uh, that is used so that when you develop your Python application, that enables you to run your Python application uh, as a native um, equivalent. Let's say if you deploy it to Windows, it will uh, run as a .NET application. If you deploy it on 
uh, your phone in an uh, Android, it will run as a Java application. Of course, that wouldn't be possible if you don't have bridges. Bridges allow you to convert your Python code into another language that is supported in that platform. So if you click here, uh, there are like two popular uh, uh, converters or transpilers. Uh, this one is like a boat, it's called Batavia. If you search like uh, Australian history, it's about like a, yeah, there's, there's a hidden story to it. I'll, I'll leave it to you to explore. So this uh, Batavia is the one that converts your Python code into JavaScript. And then uh, this one, uh, VOC, uh, that's the library that converts your Python code into Java. This is the one that uh, is used uh, when you deploy your application into Android because an, in Android we um, convert our application into uh, Java so that it can, in, it can run in the uh, ecosystem. So uh, it makes use of templates so that um, a while ago we discussed briefcase, right? So when you deploy to uh, um, uh, an, an Android application, basically it uses like a cookie cutter so that it will generate uh, the uh, Android Studio project so that it will be able to uh, deploy on the Android platform. Yeah. And then of course there are other supports. Uh, it's, it's intended to Mac OS and, and so on and so forth. So, but for, for this session we'll dig more into Toga because that's where uh, I contributed during the sprints, during the, the conference. So what is Toga? Toga is Python native and OS native GUI toolkit. Why Python native? Because you don't have to know, if le if let's say if you're devel developing a Toga application, you don't have to know C Sharp or .NET, you don't have to know Java, you don't have to know the other OS. You just develop your app in Python, and if you want to deploy it in uh, Windows as a .NET application, you just write and <laughs> deploy and it will run as .NET. If you uh, develop, uh, if you want intend your application to run on mobile, you just, uh, use Toga to run it uh, as uh, an Android application. So uh, that's why it's, uh, uh, what you call this, it's uh, interesting. So native widgets, not themes. Um, this is one of the sort of philosophy that they try to adapt. Uh, because you can see in other frameworks, there are already existing uh, uh, applications such as Electron, you write in JavaScript and you can run in uh, uh, Windows uh, and uh, Linux and other uh, operating systems. Uh, let's say if uh, you run, uh, anyone here heard about Xamarin? You write in C Sharp and you can deploy it both in uh, iOS and Android and, and so on. But for this, what we want to do is you write in Python, but you it should run as a native uh, application. Anyone here, anyone, any Game of Thrones fans here? Um, it's like, a Arya uh, wearing a mask, right? But when Arya wears a mask, it's still Arya, it's not really the person. But what we have here in Toga, you develop in Python, and it runs as the real person in that particular target. So it's different. It, it doesn't, it, it looks uh, as a native application because it is a native application. It's, it's not a mask, it's not a covering. So w abstract the broad concepts. So the abstract the broad concepts, meaning um, with that in mind, one develops application in, uh, in Python, but when it deploys, uh, there's something that we are delegating. Let's say if you develop a widget like a button or a text box, this button or text box, or let's say the menu, will have their own interpretation in the particular target that uh, uh, you're targeting for. For example, um, when you're developing a, a menu, uh, an, a, a quit button, right? A quit button, let's say in, in a Windows application, you'll find it under uh, file and then do the quit, right? Th that makes sense if you're developing for a uh, Windows application. How about if you're developing Mac? You, do you have any Mac users here? Where is your w quit button located? In the command queue or in the, they, they, call, they call it in the, in the application uh, menu, that's what they said. So different application may have different implementation of a certain concept. So what uh, uh, Toga allows you to do is, it allows one to um, 
I just want to specify, I want to have a quit button or a quit uh, approach in my application, but delegate uh, how the quit button will look like, where it will be located in the platform that I'm targeting. Yeah. It's Python native and it embraces mobile because embrace mobile because I think currently the frameworks that I've seen, at least Electron, is mostly for desktop applications. Uh, Xamarin, I think it's mostly for mobile applications. You can develop in C Sharp, uh, deploy in iOS and uh, Android. But Toga, Toga can do everything. <laughs> develop your uh, application in Python. If you want to deploy it as a desktop application, Windows, uh, Linux, Mac OS, it's possible. Not only that, if you want to deploy your application into uh, mobile platforms such as iOS and Android, it's possible. And not only that, what if you want your application that you de just developed to run as a web application? It can run as a Django application also. But we're in early days, so we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go through it. So um, Toga, these are the widgets supported by the platform. Of course, if you're using a widget that is not existing in your target platform, it's pretty hard. It won't, uh, it won't work. So, uh, so if you want to run, let's say, in like maybe three or four platforms, you when you develop your Togo application, you need to ensure that the widgets that you're using in your application are supported in your target platform. So you're, you may ask, what's the current state of, uh, of Toga? So let me just, uh, I don't have the, what call this? Let me just connect to the internet. Just to show you again. It's not yet there there in terms of maturity. Uh, but at, at least when I think of it, what, uh, when I was explaining to you, right, the idea, if this matures, I think it's going to be a very, very interesting project. Uh, currently, this is the status that we have. Uh, in terms of uh, the availability of widgets. So you can go to, uh, uh, I, I place, I'm going to share the slides later uh, so that you can uh, uh, check the links. So currently you have iOS, uh, Win32 Web, and uh, Django Cocoa, I think this is for iOS, right? Um, if you wonder why there's so much support in Cocoa, I think Russell, Russell, uh, Keith McGee is the founder of, uh, and founder, and then the B, benevolent dictator, like B, B, <laughs> benevolent dictator for this project. Uh, I think he's using Mac also, and GTK for Linux, and then uh, Android. So currently, uh, other platforms don't have support, uh, but we're working on it, uh, or at least the team is working on it, and then it's an open source project. So if there, if you let's say you're expert in uh, Maybe if if you're expert in Django or let's say you want to contribute on the Django side of things, want to develop widgets on uh, Linux or Mac OS, then um, check the, the the Toga website on how to contribute. I'll show you later in a day on how to uh, uh, do that. Uh, so that by the time maybe uh, next year and, and so, so on, we'll, we will be able to build up the uh, rich uh, uh, targets of this ecosystem. So the one, the particular one that uh, I developed during uh, the sprint is table. So as, you've as you see in here, this table uh, is uh, was only present in Cocoa and GTK, GTK meaning Linux. So during the uh, sprint, uh, I tried to help make the table available on Windows as well. Yep. So let's go back. Uh, so this is the uh, state of the uh, Toga widgets, and then we'll do a sort of a demo for now. So I'm going to run uh, at least both uh, Linux and Windows, so at least you can see the sort of difference. So I'm using Bash and Ubuntu and Windows. It's too small. I'll need to, how about this? Uh, is this good enough? or? Can you, uh, can, uh, it's good, okay. So I'll just, uh,
So earlier I did a uh, um, virtual environment for So I did a Linux in, uh, virtual environment. I installed uh, pip install uh, Toga, uh, again, uh, uh, so that I can run uh, Toga applications there. So uh, how does a Toga application look like? So I'll, I'll just show a little bit. Is the font good enough? Yep. So um, the for a s simple application, uh, just the whole code, um, you just import Toga, and we are using uh, event handlers for our button. Uh, basically, we just print hello whenever this uh, event handler is called. Um, this is our main uh, program. So this button uh, is uh, implemented in various targets. Uh, so you have, uh, if I do Toga button, if, it, if this program runs in Windows, it will invoke a, a button from .NET. If I run this program in uh, Linux, it will invoke from GPK. Yeah. And then uh, this is our um, start, uh, startup application. So we just uh, um, call build so that it will call this uh, function. So how do we run this? Ah, okay, okay, sorry. Thanks, thanks. Ah, okay, so uh, I'm using, uh, let's call this, um, uh, bashing Ubuntu on Windows. I need to export. So this is the um, button, so it's running in Linux, it's me. Um, this is uh, Bashing Ubuntu in Windows, so we're running uh, Ubuntu uh, 16, I think. So I'll just drag this here. So we have uh, um, events uh, from the button, right? So if I click here, you see the hello on the side. So that's it. That this is a Linux uh, application. What happens if I run it I as a Windows application? So it's going to be the same thing. It's just that I need to create another virtual environment and then uh, uh, load uh, Toga. Let's go here. So here in the command line, I'll just uh, load. Same thing, same command. But 
Instead, it will run as a .NET application. So this is now a .NET. So same thing, you can still do the uh, hello. Um, so here, um, Toga button, I explained a while ago, it's, uh, it has its own application. How, but this is too simplistic, right? How does it, uh, um, if you have like multiple uh, um, um, buttons uh, and um, text boxes, how does it look like? So I'll just show you uh, uh, another example. So Toga works like, uh, in, the, in terms of layout, it works like flex boxes. So you, it, you, you create the button or the widgets first. Once you have the widgets uh, uh, created like this one, so here, what I'm doing here is I created a box which serves as a container. So you have uh, a C box, which is like our uh, Celsius box where we put our uh, widgets that is related to Celsius later. We're going to build a Celsius to Fahrenheit uh, converter. So whatever is related to Celsius, we'll put it in the C box. Fahrenheit box, we'll put it there. And then the main box, which is a Toga box to put everything together. So once I have declared that, uh, for each of the widget that I'm going to uh, use, I'm going to create uh, like text input for that per particular uh, widget label, and then uh, uh, the other values as well. Like, and then this one is uh, if I want to uh, use a, a handler for the button later. So here, uh, after you've declared all your widgets, um, you need to add them uh, sequentially. So here I'm adding the input which is uh, the input for the uh, Fahrenheit and then the label, the label later, and then that will be part of the F box. And then uh, I do the same for the Celsius. And then once I have the F box and then the C box, I put that in the mother, mother box. And then uh, that's how we compose the, the um, uh, Toga application. So if I run this, will have something like this. So you type this one, and then it will uh, show it for you. So that, that's sort of uh, how it will look like. Now, the second question is, uh, this is OK. This uh, It's OK if you want to just uh, um, write a Toga application and then just run. What if you want to sort of, uh, you see the, the missing uh, widget a while ago, right? If you want to contribute uh, uh, to add more widgets into the Toga um, project, how can you, uh, uh, how, how should you be able to do it? So Toga uh, has, uh, is part of GitHub. So you have, yeah, so you just uh, go here and then uh, once you uh, clone uh, the Toga widget, then you'll have the code uh, in hand also. So I'll just show you a bit. I won't uh, dig much further. I'll save the demo for the next time. But at least you'll get some idea on how uh, how it will look like. So here, um, so beware um, Toga. So this Toga folder is the one that I just uh, clone, and then here. So at least it's easy to see. So here it's composed of different platforms that uh, Toga is uh, able to deploy to. So you have uh, uh, GTK, Flask, Django, uh, TVOS, WatchOS, Web, Winter 2, WinForms. So during the sprint last time when uh, when uh, we had in uh, PyCon, what I did was. Uh, I checked the GTK because we know a while ago that table is already implemented in the Linux uh, platform. So GTK, under GTK, you have Toga GTK and then widgets. You have the list of um, um, widgets that is avail available for that platform. So what I did was I checked the, the implementation of table there. So uh, basically for table, it's like two things that you just need to ensure. Uh, how the table is instantiated which is, uh, this is the way that they do it in GTK. And then you need to provide an interface called insert so that when you insert to the table, the rows, how that target is able to handle. 
So that's the sort of interface that we need to build. This is what they did in, uh, GP in uh, Linux. Now, uh, my task is to be able to extend this uh, widget to be able to work also on Windows. So wh what I did was I just sort of copy the, the table and then um, I just uh, uh, add the, the table inside widgets. This is under WinForms. So in WinForms, I have this table.py uh, and then uh, I provided how to create the table object as well as the interface. But as you notice, here is not the Linux application anymore. Under the hood, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, anyone knows about, uh, there's another library called PythonNet. PythonNet allows your code to be converted from Python to .NET and vice versa. So under the hood, it's using that library. So now here, um, if you can see, this is WinForms.data gives you, that is uh, by the help of PythonNet library. So we're now able to access the .NET API using this. So once you have this, uh, you'll be able to have your own uh, implementation of the table object. Yep. Um, I won't go through uh, deep into uh, this because of time constraints, but at least you get an idea on how uh, it looks like. So just uh, going back to the uh, um, summary. So in summary, Beware is really a big project. Uh, if you ask me the m in regar with regards to maturity, uh, I think it might not be there yet. In terms of promise, it's really, really, uh, if it works, it's really great because you can just write your application in Python and then deploy it anywhere you want. But of course, execution is another thing. Execution, I think is they're still in the process of developing the widgets. But of course, uh, I mean, that there's a dedicated team that is looking into this. But of, um, during uh, Python conference, they usually hold screens so that uh, people can also contribute in developing such uh, widgets. And Toga, that's uh, a project under Beware that is dedicated for that particular uh, uh, GUI toolkit. Now, if you ask, uh, how can I help? Um, you can go to this uh, link, helping B. So there are like, uh, it doesn't matter if you're an expert or, or not. If you, if you want to contribute something, there's something for everyone. So there are like for first time contributors, code contribution, and then platform usage. If you want to test something, let's say you just want to run the uh, Toga application in your application, just go through the tutorials. If you face any uh, uh, issues, just feedback as um, uh, as issue in GitHub, or there's a Gitter as well, so PyB uh, Gitter, you can just check that out. And then um, uh, I think here, if you don't wa want to code, they are also accepting uh, uh, membership. Uh, there's a, it helps the team to uh, um, focus more on the development. Yeah. So yeah, that's it for uh, Beware and Toga unless there's any other question. Yeah. Uh, for this, because it uh, it's depends on the platform as well. Because let's say for if you're targeting a, a .NET, it will be compiled or be transformed into the target uh, application. So .NET will have its own garbage collection uh, on, on that side. It's just that after that, uh, after the uh, conversion, it's you're delegating. It's not running in Python anymore. It runs as a .NET. So whatever um, uh, approaches for garbage collection of that platform, it will be done in that way. But of course, it's a Toga application. Yes, sir. So um, they have another uh, uh, project, uh, the one that I showed you a while ago, but I don't have time to demo. We have this thing called Briefcase. So if this is like, uh, if I want to deploy it on uh, Windows, for example, this is the command. So um, I already have a develop uh, uh, an app.ty that's that contains the Toga and then the widgets. I place that in, in a certain folder, and then I run this uh, setup. Uh, what this setup do, it will create another folder called Windows. 
uh, once this setup is uh, done, it will create an MSI. And then that MSI, you can give to your friends and then it, they can install it as a .NET application. Uh, this is the same approach to other platforms. So the Windows here, uh, you can replace it with Android, Linux, um, and uh, the other target platforms. Um, I tried Android um, uh, the other day and today. I think if you run it on Mac OS, I, I think it might it might work because Russell, the, the founder, right, he used Mac. Well, I tried it a while ago in Windows. It, it has some short, it's not that smooth smooth yet. So there are like uh, some things that need to be considered. But at least uh, Windows and Linux, I've tried and both of them work. Because this, this one has to be considered. Uh, you saw a while ago, right, so when we are trying to uh, interpret, uh, there will be interfaces for each of the platforms. When I develop a, a button, when I develop a certain um, uh, uh, menu, when I use that widget, that a particular platform is doing the sort of implementation. So when I, let's say, if someone is using Async I.O. Uh, on, on Python side, then the target application has to be able to interpret that, right? But if it's not coded, then, yeah. That's why when we develop widgets for this, then there are certain things that we need to consider as well. Ah, good question. Uh, I, for this, uh, at least for this, uh, when I, I, I don't have time to demo, but. Uh, I can debug it using uh, Visual Studio Code. So what I do is um, there's a command that you uh, run uh, in, the, in the command line so, so that when, when you do your VMs, uh, when you, you try to uh, build your toga so that um, your, your when you do the import toga, it will use the, the one that you have in the current uh, environment. And then here, uh, I'll just show you a bit. So here, Let's say, for example, I'm using Visual Studio Code. Um, I have this launch.json. If I do it like this, uh, so this is in a partic the particular Python path here is in a particular uh, environment, so VN virtual environment. So it will use that Python. So whatever um, libraries that is loaded in that particular uh, virtual environment, that's the one that it will use. So when I build uh, my uh, uh, um, Toga application and put it in that environment. When I run this, it will invoke the current code, so I can debug through uh, my code here. PDB. Or PDB, but I haven't tried because this one is visual, so I can just uh, you know how easy it is. It can I can just do like this, and then I can run the, the debug. <laughs> yeah, so I mean it's uh, people uh, have like their own favorite tools and stuff. So mine is just uh, Visual Studio. Any uh, any other questions? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a dedicated team. And um, in terms of contributions, I think they are welcoming contributions. Uh, this is uh, uh, what I tried to uh, share here. So uh, membership, they, have, they uh, <coughs> encourage membership for enthusiasts, professionals, uh, and uh, small businesses. So they have those kind of uh, packages if you want to sort of support uh, the, the project. I believe it's very, very a uh, great project. It's just that, uh, of course, uh, Russell doesn't work on this full time uh, because he has to, of course, everyone has to eat, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's how they sort of support themselves. But of course, code contribution is always welcome. Uh, there's another, uh, you can explore here. There's an, uh, another uh, link to the code contributions if you want to contribute. I think this is like maybe a, uh, an activity that uh, community can uh, take part in. It, we don't have, I don't think we have to wait for PyCon sprints to be able to do sprints. 
if there's enough interest, I think you guys can organize uh, sprints uh, like Saturday sprints or something so to be able to give to open source.